Greetings, Internet. This is PoserP, and I'm back now with part five of my tutorial series on programming the Kurzweil PC3. Now, in this tutorial, we're going to continue uh, looking at uh, VA or virtual analog programming. And what I want to introduce in this tutorial is cascading. So, we're going to start with a cold boot, um, just like we did in the first two tutorials. So, we're going to start uh, with, with nothing programmed, and we're going to put together a sound that has four layers where uh, layer one goes into layer two, layer two goes through layer three, and layer three goes through layer four. So it's, it's like having um, four layers all in, in series. Okay, so we're gonna turn on the PC3 here and we'll wait for it to boot up for a second. Uh, what I want to do today is I basically, I wanna emulate an architecture that's, that's, that's similar to the uh, Roland Juno 60. Uh, there's going to be a couple of differences that I'll explain later on in the video, but for the most part, um, it's, it's it's going to be similar to how the the VCA and the VCF sections work on a Roland Juno 60, uh, with respect to sliders and switches and 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 the various physics physical controls on the keyboard. Okay, so we're going to go to 999, our default program. Edit this. I'm going to pick a single cycle waveform. I'm going to go to the AMP page. We're going to turn off velocity tracking because the uh, Juno 60 didn't have that. Okay. And what I'm going to do right now before I do anything else is I'm going to set up my envelope control page. And you'll understand why in just a minute. So first of all, I'm going to assign slider C, uh, D, E, and F on this page. And these are going to perform very similar functions to what uh, what they were doing. Whoops, there we go. To what they were doing in the uh, last tutorial I did. Uh, so let's see here. We want go zero zero one eight uh, fifty. Oops. Just pick a big number there. And zero zero one eight. There we go. Okay. So you can see that those work uh, just like we've, we've we've seen before in the uh, in in the other tutorials that I've done. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is now that I have this envelope set up, I'm going to copy this layer, uh, and I'm going to copy it three times. So one, two, three. Okay, while I'm here on layer four, I'm going to turn this off. So layer four has the envelope basically, uh, or the envelope control turned off. I'm just going to go through. Okay, so, uh, and, and I'll show you why here in just a minute. So what we want to do now is um, we want to set up cascading between all of these layers so that they, the, the signal starts in layer one, goes through layer two, through layer three, and finally through layer four. So let's go to the ALK page, okay? Uh, for uh, layer one, we'll just leave the algorithm as is. We're gonna go to layer two now by hitting the Chan layer button to the left of the display. Here on layer two, I'm going to pick algorithm 105, okay? So this has an input here. That's what that uh, little squiggly line means. And I'm gonna pick layer two, or I'm sorry, layer one is my input. And I'm gonna go back to layer one, and I'm gonna turn the amp level all the way down. Okay, this is important for cascading. Uh, you can leave it up if you want to hear both this layer and then uh, the sound through the next layer, if you wanna hear both of those outputs at the same time. We don't, in this case, we just want the signal to go straight through. We don't want to hear any variations or anything. So we're going to turn the level all the way down. And as we go through the layers here, we're going to do the same thing on the other layers. So there's layer one. Now it goes into layer two. Okay, so now I'm going to go to layer three. I'm going to leave the algorithm as is, but I'm going to pick the version that accepts an alternate input. And I'm going to pick layer two. Okay, so now layer two is going into layer three. Now just like we did on layer one, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to turn the level all the way down. Okay, go back to the ALK page. We're now going to go to layer four, okay? And I'm going to also leave this layer the way it is, only I'm going to pick an algorithm that accepts input, and I'm going to pick layer three as uh, the input source. Okay, go back to layer three, go to the AMP page, I'm going to turn this all the way down. 
Okay, we now have our layers all set up. And the sound you're hearing is the key map from layer one going through all four layers. Okay, so let's go back to layer one. Okay, I want to pick now a DSP generated waveform. Okay, so I'm going to pick a square wave. Okay, there we go. I'm going to turn that down a little bit. Okay, so now that's layer one. Now I want this square wave to go through a four pole low pass filter. Uh, the Roland Juno 60 has a different filter design than the, uh, the, the, the Moog ladder filter. So I'm going to pick the first one that's available here, the four, pa four pole low pass with separation. Okay, um, So you can hear uh, probably a little bit there that the, the, the filter is now all on and it's mostly closed. Okay, layer three, I'm just going to add here at the end a gain block. Okay, and then layer four, I'm not going to add anything. I'm just going to leave the uh, DSP blank, and I'll uh, explain why in just a minute. Okay, so first of all, what I want to do here is on the DSP mod page, I want to be able to control this filter with uh, two sliders. So I want slider A or MIDI 6, also known as data, to control the uh, cutoff frequency. So I'm going to do that right now. So you can hear that we can open and close the filter with that slider. I want to do the same thing with resonance. I'm going to use slider 13. Okay, and I want to have up to 24 decibels of resonance. It's 240. There we go. Okay, now back here on the frequency uh, I want to set the key tracking to 100 cents per key. Okay, now that's all fine and good. Now what I want to do though is I want to be able to control this filter with the amplitude envelope. Okay, now if you remember I copied this uh, the first layer four times. So that amplitude envelope um, on, on each layer it has the same four sliders uh, assigned to control it. So uh, if I go here and I go 120 for my source and for depth control I'm going to pick a slider and I'm going to use slider G which is MIDI 26. Okay so what I want to do is when um, when slider G is all the way up I want my filter to open all the way up and I want that to be controlled by the amplitude envelope. Okay, when this slider is all the way down, I don't want uh, the filter frequency to be controlled at all by the amplitude envelope. So right now, I move slider A, turn down the resonance just a tad, there we go. Okay, and you can hear that moving. Um, you can hear that, now I'm gonna turn slider A all the way down and I'm gonna put slider G all the way up. Now you can hear the amplitude envelope being applied to the filter. Okay, so now what I want to do, um, that's our my cat in the background meowing. That's not my synthesizer. One day I will synthesize one of his meows, I'm sure, because uh, he's a rich source for emulation. Anyway, all right. Uh, we want to do the same thing now with the uh, gain block on layer three. Because what this does is this allows us to uh, then uh, control whether or not the, uh, the, the amplitude of the sound is controlled by this envelope. So uh, I'm going to pick, let's see here, I don't think I've used slider H yet. Uh, H, MIDI 27, I'm going to put this at 96. Okay, now with slider H all the way down right now, you don't hear anything. So I move slider H up. Now this is 96 and this is minus. So they so essentially I'm getting zero decibels out of this, or, or sort of like the max maximum volume that the um, envelope can generate, uh, or, or, or that the, that we want out of this layer. Okay, now I want slider I to determine how much my amp envelope controls the volume envelope of the sound. Okay, 
and max depth here I want to be 96 decibels. There we go. Okay, I have slider H, which is MIDI 27, and slider I all the way down. You don't hear anything. Okay, now slider H is all the way up. Now you hear the filter, um, the envelope being applied to the filter, but not to the amplitude. So I'm going to turn slider H all the way down and put slider I all the way up. Now both my filter frequency both filter frequency and the amplitude of the sound are being controlled by my envelope. Okay, so that is a quick introduction to how you to use uh, cascade mode. Um, just one more thing real quick before we go. Notice I did not do anything on layer 4, and here's why. With this key map uh, in place, and, and we're using the natural envelope, layer 4 basically is acting sort of like a gate. It just opens up immediately when you press the key down. Okay, so if I um, if I want to if I want my sound to play indefinitely, for instance, um, I can turn down how much the amplitude envelope is controlling the the gain on layer three, and the sound will just play through; it won't ever end. I can then turn on the amplitude envelope. And I get, I get the envelope controlling the sound. Now I can do mixtures of the two. I can have some sound on all the time. And I can have some, some envelope control. So for instance, I can do something kind of like this, where you can still hear it just barely in the background. Okay, thank you for watching. I have to go stop my cats from killing each other. And I will see you next time.